Hello everybody, welcome to part six of building the 37 Studebaker body. If you recall at the end of the last segment I was struggling with the parts to create this top piece here and these side panels and I needed some help and uh, so subsequently I took a class along with Steve Vincent. Uh, it was over at Smooth Engineering. Um, Ed Smoot is the uh, the owner there and he uh, taught us a few things. Steve had taken the class before so uh, it was the three of us over the course of a weekend and uh, man I learned a lot. So let me show you what transpired. Here are some photos I took during the class over at Smooth Engineering. Here's where I brought the cycle cart up into the shop. You can see the English wheel right here. And then uh, we used my patterns to create the cab corners. And here we started shaping the pieces. Made it in two pieces and then uh, Ed welded it. Here's Ed fitting the pieces on the buck. starting to bring the pieces together. A lot of trial fitting. Uh, we, we all worked on it. Anyway, I learned uh, some interesting things and uh, it was well worth the time spent. Here is the piece that was made. Uh, Ed was the biggest factor in getting this done, but it, really it took all three of us to manage and uh, I've spent the last two days trimming it and shaping it and I'm still working on getting it to fit but I'm damn glad to have it it's a uh, 60 thousandths 3003 here you can see the buck and how I used it to create the shape but now we're at the point where the wooden buck needs to go away because I need to get it to fit against these metal panels. So let me get this off of there. Okay, so now that part of the buck is gone forever. And this is the pattern for the inner structure, which I'll make out of aluminum. I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to make it yet, but that's the pattern. But my goal now is to get this new nose to fit against this, against this buck here. Okay, moving on. Over the last couple days, I've fit this new nose piece over the wooden buck a few times. And this metal is getting in the way, it just makes it hard to fit it, take it on and off multiple times. So I'm going to drill out the rivets and remove this top piece. And then these sides will kind of splay out. And then I can work directly on the buck. Get this thing to fit just right. So I've had this nose on there a few times, uh, but it really wasn't even close. Um, so, but after a couple of evenings, I've trimmed it and shaped it, and uh, it's still not there yet, but it's certainly getting close. You can see it's not quite fitting the buck yet. Plus there's some weld on the inside here that I need to grind away even over here on the sides too. So another evening of finessing this part see if I can get her to lay in there nice and even with the other panels here I've added these wood blocks on either side so that I can set the nose in place a number of times 
I really have to finesse this edge. Uh, plus, I was checking the measurement against the buck because I've had to trim it a little bit. So uh, let me grab the tape measure. I'm interested in how far out the nose is down here and up here. So if I go to the buck and I put the tape measure to it here, uh, it eyeballs up about seven and a half, seven and three quarters. So if I come over here and place it there and eyeball it up, right about here, seven. That looks pretty good. It's within a quarter of an inch, half an inch. Let's see down here how that is. Now that looks more like ten and a half to eleven inches. What do we have down here? Let's see. Going right there. Oh uh, yeah, that's way short. That's under ten inches. So this, in other words, to match the the buck, this lower part needs to bump out a little bit. I had to trim this to get it more or less square. Right now it's sitting in line with the wood buck. Okay, I gotta think about this a minute. I went and dug out uh, my drawings and uh, because, you know, I wanted to check check this this shape against this nose and uh, you remember I said the bottom needs to kick out. Well, that looks correct to me. This, this angle right here. See how this is just too steep, I think. Uh, I think I can remedy that. Um, here's my drawing in a plan view. Uh, you know, I like how it's nice and narrow right here, but it didn't quite turn out that way. It's a little bit wider here at the cowl uh, than it is I think on this drawing. You know I had to make room for my feet so this drawing doesn't take that into account that you have to actually sit in it. But I guess it's alright shape wise. So uh, I have one more thing I want to show you on the angle of this nose. There you can see the angle on the buck, how that front edge kicks out at the bottom. And you can see how this is just too steep. Maybe an inch more out of the bottom would get her done. I think the top is okay. So I have some ideas on how I can uh, get this to sit on there correct. When we made this piece, uh, we didn't take into account, at least I didn't, how much extra metal I would need so that I could trim it and make it fit just the way I wanted. By the time I squared this all up, it ended up being a little short down at the bottom there. So I'm going to get with Ed over at Smooth Engineering. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shear up some strips and I'm going to have him weld some extra pieces on here, uh, probably an inch. Um, all the way around. Then I can cut it to a taper to where it's like zero right here but one inch down there of additional length and that will effectively kick the bottom out. At the same time uh, I'll have them weld those in. I'll cut some pieces to try to clean up these openings and get them closer to what I want. They're just way oversized right now just to make it easier to fit using some poster board I'm creating a pattern for the extensions. This will go from one and a quarter all the way up to basically zero right here so it'll be tapered. My plan is to add metal in here, kind of fill in that big gaping hole. And then later I can 
make some little pieces that tighten it up that'll install externally. So my next goal is to take this piece, this is inch and a half, um, 60,000, same as the, as the nose piece. And my goal is to shape it around the edge. This will get welded on all the way around. Then this will be the pattern to cut it after it's welded and ground on. Then I can lay this over it and trim it to fit the sheet metal on the front of the cycle cart. I think that'll work. So let's uh, proceed. This extension is looking pretty good. Got it all shaped, lightly clamped in place. So that can get welded all the way around. And that should work out pretty good. I took this nose piece over to Ed at Smooth Engineering and he welded on the extra metal and the patch panels. So that's good news. Didn't turn out too bad. I have something to work with now and I can trim it to fit. All right. Here I'm using the hand shears to trim off the excess. It's going okay. Here's a strip of aluminum with some bluing dye on it. I'm going to put a line right down the center. This is inch and a half wide. And what this is going to do, it's going to be the joining strip. This will go underneath this skin, three quarters of an inch. And then three quarters of an inch will stick out on this side. And then the new nose piece will rest on top of it. So what that means is this will be a butt joint right here, this against the new nose piece. Here I've clamped this joining strip in place so I can mark the holes, but uh, the uh, new nose piece will fit like this and it will be flush right there. That's the plan anyway. I attached a couple screws to get this thing started. And as it comes up over the top here, it wants to run uphill a little bit. So I've been practicing on another piece with the shrinker to get this front lip to taper down. And I think I've got that figured out. I'll practice a little bit more before I do the official version. Working with the shrinker is a lot of fun. Uh, two or three light passes and I'm able to get get it to run even with the top. I've made my way around and I have the screws installed. I need to put a couple of sheet metal screws going into the steel chassis right here. Two there and two over here. And that will secure at least the bottom part of the body to the chassis. Because once I take this buck out, you know, the body has to be attached to the frame somewhere. Maybe I'll make some kind of inner brace. I don't know. We'll see. As I mentioned before, I needed to work on the shape here and here. Uh, you know, the side comes down and then this would bow way out. It kind of got away from us when we were making it. And it doesn't exactly fit the wood buck. So I took it outside and I beat on it, pounded it into, into submission, I flattened it out a little bit. Well that made these flare way out, so then I took the English wheel and I've been working them back in. And uh, the shape is much better. It needs to be planished. But, uh, you know, it's got to look right. So I'm getting there, i just keep plugging away at this thing really lives with just getting this edge to be nice. I think it'll be okay. This is the closest that I've been to having it ready 
to install but uh, and I'm not quite happy yet um, I need to do a little more English wheel work here and here uh, it's still kind of puffy right here for lack of a better term this needs to come you know straight down and around and it tends to bulge out a little I don't know that I can do anything about that but Another evening or two, and I think I'll have it have it installed. All right. I'd like to commit to putting this nose piece on, but there's several little adjustments I have to make. And one is to make sure I have a straight edge here. And uh, it's a little high right here, so I need to work it. And the other side is similar, just a little bit of file work and that edge would be straight. Now on the nose piece itself, if I put a straight edge here, right here where I have my marks, there's a high spot. So I'll run the file over that until it's straight. I'll do it to the other side also. And then at least those lines will come together. Uh, and I'll continue to trial fit this. Okay. One thing I noticed as I've been trial fitting the nose was that it didn't fit very good right here. So uh, I made a pattern off the nose of the car so I could lay this nose piece over it. And uh, it does need a little bit of work. The shape's just not quite right. So I'll have to work that. Uh, be, other than right here, it's fitting pretty good. So I'll, let me just work a little bit more on it and I think I'll have it. Well, I'm tired of looking at that nose piece, so I'm going to work on this inner structure here for a little bit. Let's see, Let's get some screws out and remove this lid. So this will allow me to get in here and remove this front piece of the buck. And truthfully, at some point, this whole thing is coming out, and I need to build this inner structure too. So. For the most part, my thinking is that this one and this one, I'm going to build at the same time. All right, let's move in that direction for a little while. So the body is held with two screws right here and two screws over here uh, to the chassis. So to remove this inner structure, I remove these screws and then there's some behind here and here. And that shouldn't be too hard to get out of there. This buck was stick built, so to get it apart, I just take it apart stick by stick. Just un run these screws out of there, and little by little, it'll come apart. Now, I mentioned that screws are holding the, the outer skin to the chassis right here, but uh, you can see it there. See that little bracket right there? Uh, I need to, if I remove that buck, there won't be any way that the skin is held up, so I have to work that out. There's another bracket right there. So, I have to figure that out before I completely remove the buck. My goal is to get to this piece, because that's the pattern that I need for that inner structure. Okay, I'm out here at the foot shear. This is 40 thousandths, 3003. Um, I have a tape measure, a scribe, and some steel blue layout fluid marking die. And you can see where I've sprayed both ends and I've made some little hash marks. This is one and three quarter and the seven eighths and seven eighths. And this is the mark when I go to the uh, 
over there to the uh, brake. So I'm going to punch out two or three of them. I'm getting ready to chop the second one here. This one turned out pretty good. So I'll bend this to the angle on that uh, angle finder in there, that marking gauge. It won't be a 90. Okay, let me shear these up. Alright, I have it in the shear and I just got to stomp down on the foot pedal and I'll have me a, a strip that's one and three quarters wide by 48 inches long. Okay, I have the strip clamped in and uh, I have the bevel gauge here. I'm just gonna, it's gonna be hard to get the angle dead nuts, but I can eyeball it once I bend it a little bit. That's getting pretty close. Well, not quite. Not yet. That looks a little better. Not bad for the first try. I'll bend up the other two. Then I can practice shrinking. So the angle turned out pretty good. Now I just need to work this edge and shrink it and follow this pattern. Lay this over the top of it. See how close I can get it. Okay, I'm set up here with the Eastwood Elite Shrinker Stretcher. It's a foot operated contraption. It's got the shrinker jaws in there. And I have my parts and pieces here. Here I'm working on a practice piece. And you can see that I'm headed in the right direction. Hopefully it'll make the sharp turn. I uh, am glad that uh, I decided to practice a little bit. It takes a little getting used to and exactly how much pressure, and where to put it, and when. But uh, I'll get it figured out and I'm confident I can get all the way around this piece and that, and that I can make it work. Okay, I finished making a test piece and uh, I learned quite a bit doing it. It didn't take very long. I was able to get it to fit the shape reasonably well. But uh, I had to make a better pattern. I, I determined that this outer line is not exactly the size that I'm after. So I created this new pattern and I'm gonna, I have this one more piece here. So I'm going to make one that follows this shape. And that should work out. Okay, onward. Well, I think I've reached a milestone here. I finished my first inner support structure. There'll be uh, another one at the cowl and one at the rear. So, uh, turned out pretty good. It was challenging. Uh, then I added this gusset here. This is just stiff as can be. And I don't think I added a bunch of weight. This is riveted all the way down. Right now there's just screws here because uh, I need to take this lid off to get to the next structure. I'm going to start stripping out this buck here. Alright, so let's see how the nose cone fits. 
generally speaking, the nose comb fits pretty good. It still needs just a little bit of work. Here's that inner structure spanning this gap. That looks better. And then the, the still functions fine. I need to work on the shape a little bit on these corners. But you can see it's darn near to the point where I can punch some holes and rivet it on. Wow, I can't imagine it actually get to that point. Okay, uh, that's the end of this segment. Um, got quite a bit done. Uh, on the, in the next segment, we'll get this nose cone on and uh, move on down the back side here. I want to get this built and this rear section made. Okay. Well, as always, everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.